great red spot on the planet which is clearly visible even through a small telescope. It's fascinated people since it was first seen in 1665 by the astronomer Cassini. What is actually going on to cause this phenomenon to appear and last for such an extended period of time? Well, one of the great red spot is about the same diameter as the Earth. It isn't the only enduring feature visible from Earth on Jupiter. The different coloured bands or jets around Jupiter are also long-lasting. This doesn't mean, however, that either the bands or the spot are permanent. In fact, these features change size and colour constantly, just because they're caused by the movement of the gases in Jupiter's atmosphere. It leaves us with several questions. What causes these bands? What are the forces driving the movement of the clouds? And why, with all this movement, haven't the structures disappeared? Well, Jupiter, of course, is not the only planet with a banded atmosphere. Venus, which also has a relatively thick atmosphere, and whilst the bands are not so distinct, it does have them on this much smaller planet. Also, Saturn, like Jupiter, has very distinct bands, and even Neptune has faint bands, along with having a great dark spot which disappeared for a time before reappearing. These distinct zones in the atmosphere can be caused by several different factors. Firstly, the planet is rotating or spinning on the axis. As the planet completes one rotation, the area near the equator has to travel a far greater distance than the area just at the poles. This also affects the atmosphere in these regions as well. Now, Jupiter is a considerable distance away from the Sun, but it doesn't have that much of an influence on the clouds on Jupiter. There is, however, another heat source, and that's the planet itself. The larger a planet is, and the greater its mass, the more internal heat it will generate. As Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, it generates an awful lot of heat which bubbles up through the atmosphere of the planet. So far, this means we should see the atmosphere moving fast around the equator of Jupiter and occasionally having warm upwellings from lower down in the atmosphere. And the visible part of the upper atmosphere of Jupiter is made almost totally from hydrogen and helium with a very small percentage of other gases like neon, argon, nitrogen, methane and ammonia. All these other gases, ammonia holds the key to the different colour bands. But the ice crystals that ammonia forms in are far lighter in colour than the rest of Jupiter's upper atmosphere. Less turbulence in a particular area of the atmosphere, the more crystals form and so the lighter the area becomes. A wide central belt of Jupiter is actually fast moving in the direction of Jupiter's rotation and is lightly coloured. However, the next belt down is significantly more complicated. Here it's dark coloured, where it's close to the central light belt, it's actually moving in the same direction. This can move further away from the equator, changes direction, and moves in the opposite direction. Then becomes another light band again, but again it's rotating in the original direction. At the edge, where the top of this new light band meets the upper dark band, there are great many eddies or cyclones created as the two airflows moving in opposite directions. They create what's known as a wind shear effect. The largest of these cyclones is the Great Red Spot. It's continually being fed by this wind shear effect as these zones move past each other. The result is basically a continuous storm which varies slightly in intensity over time. Eventually, the storm may subside to a more normal cyclone, only to reappear later in the same or even in a different location. It's key here to note that these bands and cyclones are not just on the outer surface of the atmosphere, they represent the very top, a very large column of air, all moving in a similar direction to the visible part. It's also important to view these as bands of gases as columns, because Jupiter is hotter lower down in the atmosphere you go, and even may have a dense solid core at its heart. Of course, as the gas heats up, it expands and rises till it reaches the top, where it cools down and falls back to the surface again. Each alternate column of air on Jupiter rotates in opposite directions to each other. The boundary between two layers will either have two rising columns of air, or two falling columns of air. This in turn alters how these bands behave relative to each other 
as the planet spins on its axis. That's just a quick guide, a fairly simplified version of how the gases form bands and spots on the surface of Jupiter.